Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I have a Ford F-150 on the lift right now and we have a power steering leak that we found during an oil change and a few other things that I'm doing to this truck. So let me take you guys in and show you what's going on. So I have you guys positioned in the front of the truck. Basically, this is the front frame. Uh, the engine's right up there. And if you notice, this whole frame here is wet. And if you follow it up right here, your power steering line here at the compression fitting is basically leaking. Now, this isn't a really bad leak. Uh, this was here for a routine checkup. I found a few things going on with it, and the customer gave me the okay to go ahead and get things done. So today, we're going to tackle the power steering hose on it. Now, these hoses can be quite difficult. Um, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to show you guys, but let me try to get you in there. If you guys can see, this power steering hose goes from here behind the filter and into the pump. And if you look right next to the pump, there is basically no room. So these are kind of a challenge to do. I'm going to do my best to film it for you guys, but you know, you never know what could happen. So let's get started. So I have you guys positioned in the engine bay. Now we have to remove a few things up here, not necessarily because you have to, but they're just in the way it's going to help aid us in getting our hands down here. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do is remove your intake snorkel. Uh, these are very easy. It's usually an 8mm on both ends. Uh, sometimes there's some vacuum hoses or something you know, attached to it. Each model is different. You just kind of got to be aware. In my case, they don't really attach anything to this. All you really have to do is just loosen both ends and it should come out now be very careful you want to wiggle this out these can be kind of brittle guys you definitely don't want to break it where the joint is here these things can be super pricey from the dealer um, just a little tip on that now that we have this out of the way we have made ourselves pretty good room so i have you guys in the engine bay now just to kind of show you and it's going to be very difficult the area that i'm going to be working in is basically right here you guys can see the pump and the frame rail. There's literally about two fingers worth of space in there. It's really hard to get a camera. I may just have to stick the camera up here and just get it through the bottom. I'm going to see how I'm going to have to film this video. It may be very difficult, but I'll try to do my best for you guys. So I have you guys positioned under the hood here as best as I could. Now the first step that you're going to do is grab your filter wrench and you're going to remove your oil filter. Now I already kind of loosened this off camera, but I wanted to show you guys. Um, you got to loosen it now if you use a tool like this it has this little pincer claws if you put any sort of scratch on the filter like you can see the paint kind of came off there you're going to have to replace this filter uh, the reason why is if you take the paint off the filter can rust and you do not want a filter that holds your engine oil pressure rusting and possibly leaking so i definitely recommend replacing it um, once we get this out of the way it'll basically just drip out a little bit now you don't have to drain all the oil out of the system. You just basically have to remove the filter to give yourself better access to the pump area where the line goes into. You can't really see it too on the camera, but this line goes up right here, right where the oil filter would be. So getting the filter out of the way will definitely help. So I have you in the engine bay the other way now, facing towards the passenger side. And I don't know if you guys can see, there is a bolt right here. Now, it's an 8mm. This is the bolt that holds the hose to the frame. It's like the little bracket assembly. So, what I'm going to do is go ahead and get in here and remove this bolt just so the line is free. So, we're underneath the truck now. This is where I believe I'm going to do the majority of the work from. Um, in order to give myself better access through this opening, I'm going to remove this. Uh, I believe this is like a uh, airfoil kind of helps the air go up uh, to cool off the radiator I believe that's what it's for uh, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the two 10 millimeter bolts now these aren't just regular 10 millimeters they're like a star shape I guess they really don't want you to remove this because you might forget to put it back on so take this off guys and remember to put it back on because it does have a purpose this is just not here for no reason so this is a new line guys this is basically the fitting that bolts up to the pump uh, the way this works is you got this part here that'll spin. This is a two-piece. Um, this piece I actually inserted on here. The way they want you to do it from the manufacturer is basically cut the old line as close as you can to the pump to get this off. And then this is a two-piece design. You can basically screw this nut portion in and then push in the actual uh, nipple end. As you guys can see, it is a two-piece design. 
Uh, that's what they recommend now before you go ahead and cut off your old line just in case it's rusted onto the pump you may want to try to loosen this first while it's all connected before you cut anything just to make your life a little easier because if you cut it and that is seized onto the power steering pump well, you're pretty much in a jam at that point so just wanted to share that helpful hint for you guys now that we went ahead and removed our airfoil here or that little cover whatever you want to call it i call it an airfoil because i think it redirects the air uh, you can see there's a lot of room here now just to kind of get you guys on a close-up visual you guys can see this is the power steering line and it goes right on the pump right here uh, the way that you're supposed to do this is to remove the belt and the pulley to be able to gain access to that but the manufacturer of my new line has a two-piece design and they show you a method where you basically cut this right here you can unscrew the bolt now I'll show you on the new line and I'll kind of go through that process and uh, how to kind of protect yourself and be careful before you cut this. But this is where I'm going to start now. I'm going to try to hit this with some PB blaster and try to loosen up that bolt or that nut that's holding the line on. I'm going to try to get you guys in on an angle but it may be very difficult because if I get you on a tripod you're going to be kind of backed away but at least you'll be able to see. So let me see what I can do on this guys. The next step before I start removing the line, uh, what you got to do guys is remove this oil tray. It's two 8mm bolts here that hold it on. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove the low side uh, from the rack and pinion. And I'll kind of show you that uh, once I remove it because I want to make sure it comes off easily. But for right now I'm going to get this out the way and then I'll show you the line. So we went ahead and we removed our little oil filter drip tray. Now we back our way up here. Now I had to do this off camera. This is basically the low power side of uh, the power steering. This is the low pressure side. Um, you can see there is the low pressure fitting. It's actually a part of the bracket that holds the high pressure and low pressure connected to the gear. Uh, this is your steering gear or rack and pinion, whatever you want to call it. Here's the line that we're replacing. The way this works is you can just basically pull it out like this. Now, I'm not ready to pull it out and make a mess. Uh, I went ahead and removed the other line that you saw from here and then it's bolted up right here. If you'll notice, it has a bracket so it holds both in place. It's one 10 millimeter bolt. Uh, it actually came off easy. I thought it would be rotted on there. They have a tendency to break, but it didn't. I wish I could have gotten it on camera, guys, but, you know, just uh, time constraints here. And What we're after here is this right here. That's basically the other end of the line that we're replacing. Now, let me take you guys down from here and kind of swoop you around to the frame area. I don't know how well you guys can see it, but it's right there. Now, I tried putting an 18 millimeter wrench in there. It's just almost impossible without removing the pump. So what I did was, if you guys will notice there, uh, that line has been cut. Uh, the way I cut it was I took my impact hammer with a chisel bit. I got it up as close as I could to you know cut it nice and close. Uh, let me see if I could get up here and kind of wiggle it for you guys so you guys can kind of see it you can see it's cut now with me cutting this flush i'm it's going to allow me to put a deep socket 18 millimeter on this fitting and to be able to get it off with a 3 8 ratchet because there's no way to fit a wrench in there and then i'll show you the new kit when we install it all right guys so we're back and i'm going to try to get you in there now you can see my fitting is gone uh, the way I did this, and I'll show you the tools, kind of explain it on the bench. So this is my 3 8 ratchet with a long extension. I got a swivel and a deep socket on the end of it. It's an 18 millimeter, guys, now. If it's been replaced before, the sizes of the bolt head might be changed. Like the one that I'm going to be installing is a 19 versus the factory one that's an 18. Now this is what we basically were after what we removed. Now, the reason why you want to cut it as flush as you can, because if you notice, this square portion, now let me cut the light off here, guys, because it's giving me too much glare. But if you look at the new line, this is how the head is. We have the same exact head here, and now the line would be connected to it like that. Uh, since we couldn't fit a wrench on here to get it off, the way I did it was I just put my air hammer on there and cut it very, very closely, basically as close as I could. And what that did is in turn allowed me to be able to slip this whole thing into the 18 millimeter and I was able to get it off. Now the new one, if you notice, is a different design. The actual threaded portion 
is a separate piece it's kind of like a compression style fitting so I'm gonna go ahead and install the new piece now to show you what the new piece looks like it's right here now I install this onto the power steering pump and then when I'm ready I basically press this into that and that'll basically make my line uh, they make it a lot easier on the reinstallation uh, versus the factory one now I've never used a factory line on these to know if they make it in two piece but I know the aftermarket ones especially this company does make it into a two piece so I'm gonna go ahead and install this up there and then I'll kind of like show you as I move along I can't get in that angle to film it guys it's just very difficult I'd be blocking the camera so I'm just gonna have to kind of explain this as I go along so we're back on the power steering pump I went ahead and I installed my new fitting uh, got it nice and tight on there now you don't want to you know pressure that on too tight it's uh, just you know like 10 15 foot pounds I believe it said in the manual I just went hand tight so now what I'm gonna be doing and I kind of already did it guys is uh, there's a bracket right here that basically holds on to the line right here let me remove the light so you can see it better and then the line basically shoots up there um, I did that off camera just to get it out of the way uh, now what we're gonna do is quite simple uh, we're going to come here and we are going to want to remove our high pressure hose now all you got to do is kind of wiggle it out uh, there is an o-ring it will give out as you guys can see it's kind of backing out now and hopefully I don't splash myself there you go it just came out once you have that removed you're gonna grab your line assembly and you're just gonna want to pull it out now that I got my old lines off and drained for the most part uh, one thing that I need off this old line is going to be this mounting tab and this mounting tab back here. Uh, the new line does not come with these. I wish they did, but you got to reuse these. The way you get these off, and I'm going to just show you how to do it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do it on camera, but you're going to want to basically locate this tab. You'll notice it has like a little tab there, like a finger. It's kind of like folded over, holding everything into place. Um, I just grab a pair of pliers like this and kind of put it in like so now sometimes they work sometimes it doesn't uh, sometimes you might have to use a screwdriver to get in here um, as you can see this one is lifting up it's taking me a little bit but I should be able to get it uh, just a little bit more here now if this method doesn't work you could always just use a screwdriver to basically you know curl that upwards and you'll be able to get it out in this case this plier method is not working too great um, so I'm gonna switch to the screwdriver method now I'm gonna do it off camera I'm sure you guys can figure this out it's quite simple so I got my brackets off and I will tell you this guys these are some of the thickest most toughest brackets that can ever come off these things don't even want to bend I barely got them to come off I kind of wish Ford made their trucks as strong as they made these brackets otherwise I wouldn't have to do this but man these things are really tough uh, you will have a fun time taking them off it's not horrible it's just it's gonna you know take a little bit uh, now I'm not ragging on Ford guys I actually like Ford I actually own a Ford and I actually own a Chevy and you know I love all trucks equally uh, I don't really discriminate on any brand but honestly these are some really tough brackets uh, Ford good job on this but try to engineer this into your trucks uh, it'll definitely help them sell a lot better so what I'm gonna do next guys is basically take my new line that I have right here and I'm going to be installing it now I'm gonna go ahead and time-lapse it maybe catch a little bit of footage of this uh, kind of show you guys how to put it in and then when I get to the important part of snapping in that connector I will show you guys how to do it So in the time lapse, what you guys basically saw was I went ahead and I put my line in here. I actually got it bolted up to the rack and pinion. I'll show you guys here in a minute. And now that I got my line in here, that's bolted up. I got my last bracket here. Now I didn't bolt this down. I just got it in position, guys. And for this last bracket up here, I'm going to wait until I push it inside the power steering pump to get the correct angle of how to put on that bracket. 
Um, so just to kind of show you guys now, it's going to be a little bit shaky because I got to grab the camera myself. So what I did was put the new power steering line in here. Um, then I put my low pressure sight on top of it. This was a little bit of a stinker to put on because it's a new part. I don't know if you guys saw me, I had to tap it just a little bit, took a screwdriver edge in there and just made sure it was fully seated. Uh, it was, but I just like to make sure. Then I put this over and it all interlocks. So you can see the two fingers grab this line, it's bolted in the center and then it's a part of the low pressure side. So that essentially is what it does on the side of the gear or the power steering rack. What we're looking at is right here. That's where you should be focusing in on that new part right there. Um, I got the camera zoomed in as much as I could. Um, that's about the best that I could do. So we are basically going to be pushing in our fitting. Now what I like to do is I take some uh, silicone spray and I like to spray it in there and on there just to help me push it in there fairly easier. And what you want to do guys is, and I'm sorry if I'm blocking the view, you want to go ahead and line it up. Um, as you can see, this new line does not want to conform, it does not want to give, uh, but we basically have to bend it into position here. Let me see if I could get her to uh, stay in place. So what we're going to do is just push it in. This is going to be very difficult, I can already tell, just by the angle that we got to go in. Uh, this is like a quick connect fitting, guys. Um, and basically it's tough uh, every time you got to put a quick connector on and it's the first time sometimes they do fight you now I can't get you guys in there and I'm afraid that I'm gonna get a bunch of oil and stuff coming back to the camera but that's how you would want to do this now, I'm gonna go ahead and do mine off camera just because you know I feel like I'm gonna be covering up the angle uh, at least I kind of showed you guys how to set it up all right guys so you can see I went ahead and I installed my fitting it was kind of a pain, uh, the main reason being that new line is basically, uh, it's conforming but also non-conforming. I know it's kind of a mind blower, uh, even though it's already bent into shape the way it should be. Uh, over the years, you know, certain things change on how the motor sits and plus the aftermarket doesn't always get it 100% right to be realistic. Uh, not say that the part isn't made correctly, but they just use a jig and they bend them and that's pretty much how they do it. Uh, what I had to do was I had to kind of manipulate the line a little bit, uh, able to fit in there. And then I got it lined up fairly good. And I just used a little baby hammer to get on the head there and just n nicely tap on it just to get it worked in. There was no way in that angle to try to push it in with my finger. So like I said, line it up, get it really straight on there and just go, you know, like this tap 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 now you're not going to go on there and go you know like crazy you're not trying to break it you just want to tap it it'll lightly go on there um, now that's all done I went ahead and I reinstalled my bracket on there very easy I just didn't install it because I wanted to see the angle that my line was going to be in before I put it in and then I also went ahead and I fabbed up and bolted down my other holder there uh, now all that's left is to put the cover on for the oil filter, but before we do that, I always uh, stress this with you guys. Make sure you clean up your area, uh, especially in an area like this where a lot of oil can happen to be in a very tight space. You want to have a nice clean area to show the customer that the repair is done. Now that we have our area cleaned up, uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and install the filter now. Notice I'm putting in a brand new filter guys. I'll show you the old one right now and the reason why I'm not going to be reusing it. This customer just got an oil change and I mentioned you scratch them up when you uh, take them off. So if you guys can see here, those are all the little claw marks that happened uh, when I was able to grab the filter off of my tool. Um, the paint has gone away. Now I didn't puncture the filter but without paint being on there, I'd be worried that this steel filter would rust create a pinhole and create a leak or have a massive leak and then basically take out the engine. Uh, the reason why I'm saying that is because I've seen filters that have rods and have pinholes in them. Maybe you guys haven't seen it per se. Um, if you do this long enough, you will see the weirdest things out there. Um, apparently what happened in the one that I saw was they were taking it to a quick loop place and I guess they were not replacing the filter. Every time they were just draining the oil and filling it back up because the filter was in a tough to get spot and eventually the filter rusted and was leaking through the filter. So it does happen. 
Um, now I'm going to take my oil tray cover and this is real simple. Um, you just basically take your oil tray and you're going to want to put it underneath the line there. And then what you're going to want to do is locate where your bolts are and then you're going to put your bolts in and tighten it down. Now I got my drip for my oil filter installed. Key note on this guys line goes underneath it it kind of curves over it so don't put the line above it you can easily do it um, i almost did it for a second there but i kind of caught it uh, so make sure you do that uh, next step is basically reinstalling our little radiator cover that we had up here uh, it's actually really simple let me see if i could just do it while you guys are on the camera with me without dropping my camera uh, this is fairly simple you just take it, line it up, it has two bolts, easy enough. Now remember these are a star pattern. I wind up using a 3 8 uh, with uh, a 12 point socket on there. That's how I was able to get them on and off. So once I have them threaded in by hand, I'm going to push that one up. Now this side is fixed on the driver's side. And this passenger side one is adjustable. Now I'm going to line up my marks to where it used to be. And there's our cover now. I think I probably got a bad camera angle on this. Uh, you guys probably didn't see the whole procedure. I should have probably had it angled that way. Sorry guys. But, you know, just make sure you put your cover back. Um, everything is cleaned up. Everything is buttoned down. I got my filter installed. Now I'm going to do a little bit more cleaning off camera, but the first thing that I'm going to want to do before I proceed and do that, I'm going to go ahead and lower the truck, fill up the power steering system, and then I'm going to check to make sure we don't have any leaks. So the truck's back on the ground. I went ahead and I installed my intake tubing. The reason why you want to do this is this does have a mass airflow right here at the air inlet. Um, it basically started up and this is not flowing air through and getting to the engine, it'll run rough or not want to run or stall out. Um, I don't want to check engine light on the truck or anything, so I don't want to clear out any of his data. So I'm just going to, you know, leave it be, plug it in before I start the truck. Um, next thing is you want to remove your cap for your power steering fluid. Now my reservoir is right here. And I already went ahead and I filled it up, guys. Um, pretty much this was empty because it drained out when I removed my line. Um, so I went ahead and I filled it up with some oil. Now I've shown you guys this process before. Uh, let me reposition you guys here. Uh, hopefully you guys don't get dizzy because you know, I know everything's shaky um, Every time you have a power steering system open and basically you fill it up you have to bleed out the air Now I got you guys off to the side you guys can see the wheels of the truck after you fill up your power steering reservoir before you start the car or truck that you're working on you fill up the reservoir you want to move your wheels lock to lock the reason why you're doing this is to basically get out in the air now I'm going to do this a few times guys and most of the air will get out of the system. Then I'm going to check my level again and I'm going to fill it back up if it needs any. And then I will probably start it up and see if I have any air left. Now more than likely it doesn't get all the air out. You will have the pump making some sort of noise like a churring noise like a uh, kind of common. And you'll also see your fluid goes from a clear fluid to like a bubbly smoothie kind of strawberry milkshake texture. Um, that's okay. What that means is basically turn off the car or truck, let it sit for about 30 minutes, let the air bubbles get out of the fluid. Uh, you want to add fluid if it needs fluid after that. And then essentially you're just going to, you know, keep doing that until there's no more air bubbles. Um, usually you do it once or twice. You'll get air bubbles on the first try. After the first try guys, you let it sit, do it again. And normally you're good to go. Now we're back up underneath the truck. As you guys saw, I bled out the power steering system. I started the truck. Everything is good. I let it run for about a half hour. And if you guys can see, now I'm just checking for leaks and everything looks good. Now, it's kind of a hard angle, uh, but nothing basically leaked down. Let me lower you guys here. Uh, I still haven't cleaned up the frame, so this, you know, wetness that you see here is from, you know, us doing the repair, whatever dripped out. But if you follow the line right here which is that shiny line now if it was leaking you would have a pool of oil dripping down that line and as you guys can see everything is nice and dry now it's hard to see that fitting where it is because that oil filter is in the way now 
uh, and I'm not going to remove the oil filter just to check it. I was able to get in here with a mirror and a light and I could see that the fitting was dry. Uh, so I'm going to call this one done. She is ready to go. So that about does it for this video guys. Uh, this truck is all set. She's ready to go. Um, this power steering line is fairly difficult. Uh, you do need quite a bit of uh, tools to get in there like angles and things like that. You need like some adapters. But all in all it's not horrible. It's probably one of the tougher things that I've done you know like this past day or two. Uh, it is a little bit challenging. Uh, but like I said, it was able to get done uh, and I'm glad we got it finished. Uh, hopefully this uh, is useful for you guys if you plan on doing this on one of these trucks uh, or if you're just watching it for entertainment, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and you learned something and you got to see the process. Um, if you like the content, please comment, like, and subscribe. It'll definitely help my channel grow. And so far, uh, my channel has grown, so I do want to thank you guys very much for that. Uh, without you, I wouldn't be able to do this. Um, so... Hope you guys have a great day. I will catch you guys on the next repair.